So the question is, do I really need a table saw? Having a table saw with a high powered motor is really nice, but it's kind of unnecessary really for what I'm doing. A lot of stuff I'm finishing by hand. I've never had a jointer, so that's never really been much of an issue. A bandsaw can get me where I need to go. I just need to have things sort of roughed out. And as you've seen before, I've been resawing by hand, which is kind of insane. And it's very traditional, yes, and it's fun and cool, but I'm kind of over that. So with a bandsaw, it's gonna have a fairly straight cut, but it will have a little roughage on that edge, which I can just clean up with a jointer plane. Something like this should be able to take care of all that finish work, and that should be able to give me a nice straight edge. I've got my finishing planes. This is not really a 100% traditional hand tool shop. I'm still gonna have my power planer to be able to rough things down. Really, I just don't need that table saw. And the wing is just a, another flat surface. As most people know who have flat surfaces in their shop, they just tend to collect a lot of crap. This is now where I think my woodworking is going, and I think that this space is going to now be more tailored towards that. So full disclosure here, this bandsaw was given to me by Harvey Tools. This is the three horsepower alpha with the TIN table. And if you're looking for a review video or a how to on how to set it up, well, this ain't it. To be completely transparent, I know very little about bandsaws and I had to watch a few other folks in their various Harvey alpha setup videos to be able to get a grasp on things. With that being said, the instruction manual itself is fairly straightforward. Uh, my buddy Mike from Wing and Wave Designs came over as an extra set of hands and I paid him in steaks and whiskey for his time. But honestly, after watching Jason Bent from Bent's Woodworking set this up and speaking to Michael Alm on the phone about his experience setting this up, I don't know how these guys did this by themselves. The machine is heavy, the cast iron table is heavy, and even getting the mobile base together is much easier with two people. So kudos to them for doing it, but I'm not about that throw out my back life. As an aside, if you're watching this video and you're concerned about our choice in footwear, well, you should be. Neither of us clearly care about our toes and feet, so if you care about your lower extremities as this bandsaw is extremely heavy, you know, wear some real shoes. Uh, this is Florida, there's just no real rules down here. Also, speaking of Michael Alm and instruction manuals, I will say that the instruction manual on this sucker is kinda hiding in a weird place. I don't know if this is going to be typical of everyone's machine, I would assume so, but I don't manufacture industrial woodworking tools, but the instruction manual is not in the accompanying box with the machine. So as I said, I gave Michael Alm a call and asked him where his instruction manual was hiding on his machine, and of course, in pure Michael Alm fashion, he could not remember, and just so that he watched Jason Bent's video to get it set up. Turns out the manual was in the lower wheel compartment, which does make sense, I suppose, but you know what makes more sense? Having it in the box with the other parts. The box that I have to open first at least 30 minutes before I get into this lower wheel compartment. And once all the heavy stuff is on, ease of setup is quite a breeze. All the bearing guides are adjustable with thumb screws, the Allen set for everything else is included as you just saw, and it's pretty much plug and play as far as calibration goes. I've only set up two out of the box machines before, one being my friend's saw stop and the other this, and this was extremely simple. If you want more on how to accurately set up a bandsaw, go watch an Alex Snodgrass video in terms of adjusting bearing guides. I watched about three or four to get a feel for what a final setup should look like, and as you can see, it is performing excellent. Pretty wild to actually have floor space. I don't think at any time, really, I've been able to just freely walk in a circle around my bench. This is just too cool. So now this is the primary side that I'll be working on, and I have access to all my saws, all my planes, and if I need to, I can even use my floor saw horses here and actually work on the floor as well in that traditional Japanese style. Of course, the bandsaw is on wheels, so if I also need to free up this space, like I wanna use my end vise here, then I can just wheel this sucker out. Dust collector is new here that I just installed. I do want to have the Magpul 
support dust ports. So my dust hose here is fairly long. And the idea behind that is that I want to be able to, if I need to use the bandsaw out in you know my porch area and driveway, but that also creates a hindrance because I'm using the hose clamp and it's fixed. Obviously I can unscrew it and rescrew it, but you know, doing that's a little bit of a pain in the butt. With the Magport dust fittings, I should be able to have a much cleaner setup here, be able to wheel things out freely and easily more so now, but even right now, like this is just a night and day difference as far as space is concerned. A friend of mine was getting rid of a Festool MFT table that I can use with the track saw. So if I really need these weird precise cross cuts that I can't do by hand for one reason or another, that is always an option as well. So that's it. This is my new shop. I mean, it is a completely revamped space and it's really tuned to be able to fit the work that I'm doing now. When I first started this channel, I was primarily power tool focused with just a little bit of hand tools. And this is a hard pivot that I've been making over the past three years even to get more dedicated to hand tool work. And now, especially with my obsession with Japanese tools, I am just really committing to this. So the first part of this commitment is obviously as I did get rid of my table saw, utilize a bandsaw for roughing a lot of material. And now you'll see a lot more of these tools in action on a more dedicated and daily basis. And I'm really excited to share with you this whole journey. As always, thanks for watching and see you next time here at Cowdog Craftworks.